Haruto was a sweaty tryhard gamer who started a party in a VR game and soon became the strongest player in this alternate world. But because of his mistake his crush ended up suffering a horrific death which made the rest of his friends abandon him. After quitting the game for several years, he finally starts playing the same game and becomes overpowered once again just to try and revive his crush back. Haruto, a high school student in modern day Japan, harbors a painful secret. Several years ago, a game named Union was announced in Japan, accessible only to those with a unique power known as Sense, and Haruto was among the chosen few. Despite being in grade school, he quickly became skilled at the game and formed a close-knit group of friends within it, naming their team Subaru. As the leader of Subaru, Haruto and his teammates tackled the most challenging quests with ease, thanks in part to a girl named Asahi. Her profit art sense allowed her to foresee enemy movements, complementing Haruto's combat abilities perfectly. Among their group was Satsuki, who secretly held a crush on Haruto and suspected his feelings for Asahi. One day, they learned of an unconquered dungeon believed to be impossible. Haruto, confident in their abilities, rallied his teammates to conquer it. While some hesitated, they agreed, and a date was set for their dungeon exploration. Inside the dungeon, their journey went smoothly, with Asahi's foresight nullifying threats. They reached the final boss's chamber, facing a monstrous steel-clad foe. Asahi directed them. Haruto and Taka executed their plan but the regenerating monster presented new challenges. Despite Taka's warnings, Haruto rushed in, leading to a critical moment where Asahi shielded Haruto from a lethal attack, sacrificing herself. Heartbroken, they learned that a player's death meant they couldn't return to the game. Asahi's sacrifice haunted them, and Taka blamed Haruto for his recklessness. Years passed, and Haruto, now in high school, had distanced himself from the game that took so much from him. Then, Reunion, a reboot of Union, was announced. Haruto resisted at first but eventually gave in to his classmates' pleas, who needed a third player. As Haruto logged into Reunion, he noticed that the game had changed. Wandering, he was joined by two clueless classmates, a boy and a girl, who wished to explore a low-level dungeon. Despite their inexperience, Haruto helped them when they encountered monsters, saving them from a potential disaster. Continuing their journey, they entered a room and discovered a large chest. The classmates urged Haruto to open it while they stood at a distance. As Haruto unlocked the chest, a blinding light filled the room. When his eyes adjusted, he was shocked to see a grown-up Asahi emerging from the chest, her memories intact. Haruto is totally dumbfounded after seeing Asahi, and is even more disturbed by the fact that Asahi is behaving as if nothing ever happened. At first, he thinks she is an imposter, and he takes her out of the dungeon to talk to her. She talks to him very happily. But she senses that Haruto has changed and asks what happened. Haruto is very hesitant to reveal what actually happened and starts interrogating her. He asks her about the current year, and she replies by giving the year when she died in the game six years ago. Haruto informs her that six years have passed since that, and she still believes that he is trying to mess with her, and she laughs it off. Haruto finally cannot take it anymore, and he tells her about her death six years ago. She looks at him very seriously tells him that he shouldn't make jokes like that, and starts talking about something else. Haruto, however, tells her to check whether she can log out from the game, and she tries it, only to see that she cannot log out from the game, which starts troubling her, as Haruto shows that he can easily log out from the game if he wants to. She asks him about the whereabouts of the rest of the gang, but Haruto replies that he hasn't talked to them in six years and has no idea where they might be or whether they even play the game or not. This news saddens Asahi, as she cannot understand how such a tightly knit group as theirs could fall apart. Before she could speak again, however, a bunch of men surround them from both sides, and a completely jacked guy walks in front of them and remarks that he always thought that Asahi died six years ago but how they turned out to be rumors. Haruto doesn't remember this guy in the least. He, however, seems to know Haruto from the old days. Even Asahi seems to remember the muscle-brained guy and tries to remind Haruto that even when they used to play together, this guy would always try to sabotage them, as he wanted Asahi on their team. But Haruto and the others were so incredibly strong that they were easily able to defeat them. Haruto finally remembers that the muscle brain is known as Leon, and he used to act like Team Rocket from Pokemon always trying to steal his Pikachu, which was Asahi. He tells Leon to back off as he is trying to figure things out, but Leon gets pissed and punches a boulder, breaking it into a thousand pieces, before he rushes forward at an incredibly high speed and punches Haruto in the stomach, which makes him double down on the floor. Leon himself seems surprised and laughs at Haruto, asking whether he has lost his sense completely. 
Haruto gets up and brings out his sword, ready to battle, but before he could do anything, Leon punches again. But Asahi shouts from behind that it is a fake punch and he is going for a head kick. Haruto hears it in just the nick of time and is able to dodge Leon's attack, and Asahi provides cover fire, forcing Leon to back off. He regains his balance and starts threatening them again, claiming that he will beat the crap out of them and force them out of the game if they don't immediately join his guild and apologize to him. He starts walking towards Haruto but stops midway after hearing a voice behind him. It turns out to be Taka, who has started playing again, and he is now in one of the strongest guilds known as the Illuminati. He summons a bunch of his underlings and tells Leon to back off, otherwise, he will give him a game over and send him to the real world for good. Leon doesn't listen to the threat and rushes forward with a punch, but Taka easily dodges it and grabs his face before using his special ability, which tears all of his clothes into shreds, and he runs away out of embarrassment like a little bitch baby. He walks up to Haruto and asks him whether he lost his sense, to which Haruto replies maybe. He looks at Asahi and smiles before saying that he missed her. He and Asahi talk a bit more, and Taka asks Asahi to join him, and Asahi immediately agrees eagerly, saying that all three of them can start a guild again. But Taka becomes tense at this statement and informs her that only she can join him, and he will never work with Haruto. Haruto simply looks down, while Taka berates him a bit more before telling Asahi to not help him, as he is a self-centered piece of garbage. Asahi shuts him up and tells him that she doesn't want to go with him anymore because he is being so mean, and Taka takes his leave telling Asahi that his gates are open for her and she only needs to call him if she ever wants help. Haruto logs out of the game and lays down on the bed, thinking about everything that has happened till now. When he hears a knock at his door and his sister calls him down, he opens the door to find none other than Satsuki, who seems to have grown a lot, especially at certain places. She greets him awkwardly and asks if she can talk to him. They both go to his room, and Satsuki reveals that she has also started playing Reunion and wants to patch things up with him. Haruto seems surprised and finally reveals that he also played it for a while today, and tells her that he met Asahi over there. At first, she takes it as a very bad joke and scolds him, but when he tells her the entire story, she tells him that she wants to see her personally, and only then will she believe it, and Haruto finally agrees to play with her one more time. They log back into their accounts, and when they meet, Haruto is accompanied by Asahi, which totally shocks Satsuki. Asahi starts asking a bunch of questions about where they were this entire time and why the group disbanded. Satsuki, unable to control her emotions, bursts out, telling her that she was the reason why their group broke off because she died while trying to defend Haruto, which led to her death in real life as well. Haruto tells Satsuki to back off a little bit but she tells Asahi that she still visits her grave every year, and she is scared that the reason why she can see her right now is just a bug, which will fade away sometime soon, leading to even more heartbreak for her. Suddenly, Haruto feels like something is off, and he swings his sword to swat away an arrow coming towards them. Suddenly, a bunch of men surround them yet again and demand they hand over Asahi, but this time, Satsuki walks up with her whip and release several different elementals of magic all at once, which totally shocked the guys because even the excellent wizards could only use two or three elementals, but Satsuki could use all of them, and that too at once. She is single-handedly able to deal with all of them at once and tells Haruto and Asahi to come back to their old base. They go back and take a deep dive into the lake of nostalgia as they see their things from six years ago that are untouched by time. While the girls looked around for more stuff, Haruto the emo boy ended up going down alone to the pond, where suddenly he sees a mysterious shadow coming towards him, which turned out to be a Pokemon-looking woman named Alicia. She tells Haruto that she can read his brain, but she is not here to hurt them. Instead, she tells him that a bunch of people are also behind Asahi, and they will lurk in the shadows till the time to strike is perfect. Haruto is dazed by what just happened and can't understand where that girl came from or where she went. He feels like he needs a break from all this bullcrap and decides to go back up for some rest when he hears Asahi and Satsuki talking heatedly. He hides behind the corner like an absolute snake and eavesdrops on the conversation, which is totally uncool. He overhears Satsuki telling Asahi to leave Haruto alone, as when she died six years ago. Haruto was hurt the most out of everyone in the group, even though he could not show it. He was shattered from the inside, and he stopped being himself, and nothing has been able to bring the old Haruto back. She tells Asahi that when she died six years ago, a part of Haruto died with her, and she doesn't want Haruto to get hurt again, as this time he might not be able to handle the pain. Asahi is extremely saddened by this, but before she can say anything, Haruto comes in between them and tells them to leave it alone. 
He tells them that he is fine and also tells them very bluntly to leave him alone and care about themselves. He then simply logs off the game. The next day, Satsuki arrives again at Haruto's doorstep. Thirsty much, Haruto lets her in, and she apologizes for the previous day, and how she just wanted to protect him. She tells him that she cares extremely deeply for Asahi, and the last thing she wants is for her to go away again. But she also cares for Haruto just as much and cannot see him in so much pain all the time. He thanks her for caring about him, and she suddenly produces a ring from her pocket, which instantly tickles some memories in Haruto's brain. He remembers how they went to an arcade, and all of them bought a ring for themselves to depict their affiliation and bond with their group. Haruto has an idea, and they both run to the cemetery where Asahi was buried, and Haruto, the giant grave robber, starts digging her grave. He was lucky that he wasn't arrested and was able to get a ring out of her grave, as he remembered that on the last day. He and Asahi exchanged their rings and made a promise to protect each other. They come back, and Haruto decides that no matter what, he is going to win the game, find a way to preserve Asahi, and figure out what the reason is for her appearance in this game. The next day, they log back into the game, and Asahi convinces Haruto to help her with a quest to retrieve a very rare sap from a special tree inside the forest. They work together and try to bring down these trees one by one who are not very strong monsters, and especially because of Asahi's skills to look into the future, they are easy to deal with. The problem, however, is that the drop rate of the item that Asahi is looking for is extremely low, and most of the trees did not drop any sap after getting killed. She decides to bait herself, and as she expected, a giant monster tree runs up to her and grabs her. Haruto is quick on his feet, rushes towards the tree, and chops off its hand. Asahi quickly takes aim and destroys the tree with a well-placed headshot, and to her total delight, the tree ends up dropping the sap that she so badly wanted. She falls into the lake below, but when Haruto descends down to check up on her, he is happy to see that she is completely fine and has gotten the sap. They return to the town, and Asahi takes him to a blacksmith's shop, where she crafts the sap into a ring. I don't know how, Haruto is surprised to see that it is the same party ring that they got when they were young and Asahi wants to make three of them so all three of them can start wearing them again, like they used to do when they were young. She tries giving the ring to Haruto, but Haruto tells her to keep this one for herself and actually ends up putting the ring on her ring finger himself. This is seen by Satsuki, who gets jealous that Asahi is getting all the attention, so she quickly flies to the forest and, after a while, comes back with a sap and gets it converted into a ring, hoping that Haruto will also put a ring on her finger but he doesn't, which is very funny and very sad. Satsuki, however, gets embarrassed as she is a tsundere and quickly puts the ring on herself. Haruto hatches a plan to find out what happened and to find out a way to get Asahi's memories back. He goes back to the dungeon where Asahi died. Along with both the girls, he enters it to try and defeat the boss, which somehow makes perfect sense to this dumbass. Last time, when they were at their peak strength and their party had six members, they lost and one of them died, so obviously, when half of their party is missing, they can somehow defeat the boss of this dungeon. They go inside the dungeons anyways and start traveling through the same routes, probably getting PTSD. But mental disorders are not real, just like my friends. They go through the dungeons and finally reach the point where they found the boss last time. But this time nothing happens. Suddenly, Asahi feels a presence, and they all turn around to see the Pokemon girl fading away into darkness once again, spewing some cryptic bullcrap that no one has the time to decode. From the same darkness, the monster emerges once again, in all its glory. That's what she said. They all get flashbacks of what happened the last time they were here, and they decide that it's too scary and try to run away. But the boss is in the mood to play and throws his swords towards the entrance, breaking the roof and blocking it completely. The boss throws a bunch of swords at them, but they all dodge, and this time Satsuki decides that she needs to man up and fight this idiot. She uses her most powerful magic, which combines the magic from all the different elements and stacks them up firing a giant magical beam at the boss, but to everyone's dismay, the boss has a magical barrier, and magic cannot penetrate that. The boss picks up his sword and brings it down towards Satsuki, who tries to dodge but fails and gets hit in the legs, getting stunned and being unable to move. Haruto, the grab robber, quickly runs towards her and tries to defend her, but the boss simply hits him like a fly in the air, and he too gets trapped below some fallen debris. The boss slowly starts moving towards the grab robber to finish him off, but Asahi is not satisfied by dying once to this monster, so she comes in front of him yet again and starts shooting at him with her puny gun. 
Haruto tells her to move aside, to not be a dumbass once again, and not to destroy his mental health by dying again. But once an idiot, always an idiot, she stays right in front of him and somehow shoots above the boss's head, making the ceiling collapse on him and buying some extra time. In the process, however, she gets hit and also gets stunned, unable to move her legs. The boss stands up once again, and Haruto curses himself for being so weak, probably also because he is a grave robber, and gets ready to admit defeat, but suddenly spots something shiny on the ground and finds a ring on the floor. He recalls that it was his ring that fell from his hand when they fought the boss before. He gets a boost of energy, and he picks up the ring and wears it. The monster tries to attack Asahi, but Haruto quickly intercepts the attack and chops the monster's arm off. He then calls forth his spirit lion, which attacks the monster, injuring him severely. And then he uses his special ability by slashing in the air multiple times at once, which destroys the monster once and forever. Haruto and the others walk outside of the dungeon and seem to be really happy about their success today. But suddenly, Asahi starts feeling dizzy and collapses on the ground. Suddenly, all three of them see flashes of old memories that belong to Asahi, where she seems to be in a completely different place, being overlooked by people in lab coats. When the vision ends, Haruto asks what that was about, but Asahi has no idea because she doesn't have any memories about these occurrences. They go to the inn they are staying at, and as soon as they enter it, everyone turns towards them and starts gossiping about whether they are actually the revered group or imposters and whether they defeated the dungeon monsters or not. Haruto decides to completely ignore them and leads the other two girls into the room, where they sit down and relax for a bit. Asahi is still hellbent on uniting the entire team under one banner once again, but Haruto informs her that they don't even know whether Clive and Nozomi even play the game or not. Satsuki claims that she has a bunch of informants, and they can help figure out where they are and whether they are still playing the game or not. The next day, they all set out to meet the informants and find out whether they have any information regarding the other two members, but on the way, they encounter a bunch of people running away, and when they ask them for the reason why they are running, they reply that the guild known as Southern Cross is seen nearby the area, and they don't want any problems with them, so they are running away. Haruto considers backing off, as he doesn't want any troubles right now, as he already knows the Southern Cross from back in the day, as they were one of the guilds that wanted to steal Asahi away but never succeeded. Satsuki, however, tells him that the informants are only nearby and it shouldn't take much time, so Haruto agrees. They walk in a valley, and suddenly Haruto stops as he senses that something is wrong, and sure enough, the leader of the Southern Cross emerges from behind a rock. Suddenly, they look around to see that they are completely surrounded by the guild members, who number in the thousands. The leader intercepted the informants and ended up luring the three of them here so he could take Asahi away. Haruto tells him to back off, and Satsuki tries to take out her whip, but immediately a barrage of arrows land near Satsuki as a warning to stay still. The leader claims that there is no way for them to escape this, and the best thing they could do is peacefully hand over Asahi and return to where they came without any troubles. Haruto obviously refuses this and tells him to shove his offer where it belongs. Haruto tries to find a way to escape this predicament. But suddenly, a bunch of men dressed in blue emerge from behind the members of the Southern Cross and take them hostage. Haruto recognizes them as the Brill Society, whose leader used to hate Haruto and his group and wanted to steal Asahi away as well. The leader of the Brill Society shouts at the leader of the Southern Cross to back off, as he has taken Haruto and the others into his temporary protection. The leader of the Southern Cross seems hesitant, but when he sees that they are outnumbered and outmaneuvered, he gives in and calls his troops back to withdraw for the moment. The leader of the Brill Society walks up to Haruto and asks them whether they are okay. Haruto tells him that they are fine and then immediately asks what his plans are and why he protected them. The leader of the Brill Society claims that the old leader used to hate Haruto and the others, but he doesn't at all because he has no reason to. He just came here to offer Haruto and the others the chance to join his guild so that they could provide protection to Asahi. According to him, Asahi is an element that shouldn't have been present in this game, but still she is, which makes the game operate on very unstable grounds, and any incident can break the balance and result in the collapse of the entire game, and he wants to prevent that from happening. Asahi, however, steps up and tells him that she isn't going to join anyone's guild, as she has a guild of her own that will help her and protect her when needed. The leader looks at them and tells them that they are making a mistake, but he isn't going to force them, as that might also mess up the balance of the game, and bids them adieu before calling his troops back and walking away. Haruto and the rest walk back to the inn, 
and both he and Satsuki log off. The next day, Haruto invites Satsuki on a kind of date because he wants to buy some new hardware for his computer, and Satsuki eagerly accepts the invitation. They go inside the mall and shop for stuff before they decide to go for lunch as well, which makes Satsuki extremely happy. Haruto, however, is dumber than an earthworm and keeps talking about Asahi the entire time which makes Satsuki feel left out and puts off her mood completely, forcing her to leave. The next day, they both log in, and Haruto meets both girls at the inn. They try to figure out what the visions that they had when they came out of the dungeon were and how they are connected to Asahi. She replies that she tries to remember often, but the last memory stuck in her head is her jumping in front of the beam to try and save Haruto. They try and brainstorm for quite some time, trying to find any way to bring her memories back. And finally Haruto has an idea. He asks Asahi about the place where, for the first time, her prophetic powers were used, and she replies that it was in the Tower of Heaven, pretty early on when they weren't very strong. Haruto tells them that they need to go there, and maybe it will help Asahi remember something. They all move towards the tower and enter it, where they end up facing some monsters here and there that they felt were very strong back in the day, but now they are nothing more than a nuisance for them. They again go down the nostalgia lane as they walk through areas that they have already visited before. And finally, after defeating every small monster, they enter the boss room. The boss turns out to be a giant robot, and Haruto remembers the time when they were facing him and felt that it was so powerful that no one could defeat it. This time, however, the boss seems to be child's play for them. Asahi starts shooting at the robot, destroying one of its arms, while Haruto runs forward to quickly cut down the other arm. Satsuki then uses her flame magic to completely burn the robot, which takes them to level 2, where the robot lets off a bunch of steam, making the visibility near zero. Haruto remembers that the last time they were facing him, the steam completely caught them off guard, and they were only able to defeat the boss because Satsuki used her light magic, which lifted the steam and let them approach the target. Haruto tells Satsuki to just use her light magic once again, but she suddenly gets caught and stunned by a rope emerging from the robot. She disappears in the steam, which scares Haruto, and he asks Asahi to use her flare rounds. Asahi shoots a flare shot, which lifts the steam up, and Haruto uses his special fury slashes to destroy the robot completely. They then proceed on top of the roof, and finally, Asahi decides to use the teleportation crystal to get out of the area, but suddenly stops as she sees a mysterious red gem among her items. She takes it out and shows it to Haruto who also doesn't know what it is, but suddenly, Taka teleports onto the rooftop alongside his guild members and snatches away the red gem. Asahi protests against him and tells him to return it, but Taka tells her that the gem doesn't pass the vibe check. He then turns towards Haruto and asks him if he is trying to kill Asahi, which is very stupid, to be honest, but whatever. Haruto obviously replies that no, he isn't, but I guess Taka just wants to fight, so he creates an isolation chamber and challenges Haruto to a duel. Taka rushes at Haruto and tries to punch him, but Haruto blocks his punch relatively easily but is pushed back by the extraordinary force. He tells Haruto that Asahi is real and that he cares for her. He is willing to stay inside this game world if that is what it takes to stay by her side. He becomes an even bigger emo boy by telling Haruto that the real world lost all its meaning for him the day Asahi died. The real world means nothing to him, but here in the world of Reunion, where Asahi is still alive, he will make this his real world and never log out. Haruto understands how dumb his plans are and tells him that they should also consider the feelings of Asahi, and not only their own. He tells him that if he wants to make her happy and get laid, he should recreate the guild with them. This triggers Taka, and he tries punching Haruto, and he tries to do the same. But before they could actually fight, the isolation sphere collapses. Satsuki was the one who broke the sphere with her magic, and even Asahi pointed a gun at Taka, telling him to get away from Haruto. Taka gets sad at this and backs off. Asahi calls him and asks him once again to join them and recreate the guild, as with his help, they can even find Clive and Nozomi. But he tells them that he has no idea about either of them and that he is not going to ever join forces with Haruto. Taka and the other members of the Illuminati then back off and teleport away. Haruto and Satsuki also say their goodbyes for the day and log out. The next day, Haruto logs in earlier and goes with Asahi to different continents with the help of special teleporting places, so they can meet with the informants over there and ask for information on Clive and Nozomi. They travel through several continents and ask a lot of questions for information, 
but none of them seem to know much about anyone named Clive or Nozomi, as they are not registered on their continent. They then go to the edge of the forest and wait for Satsuki to come so they can continue their journey forward. They try finding more teleporters, but they are unable to, so they decide to walk towards the next continent, and the path goes through a forest that is covered in mist. At first, they seem to enjoy the beauty of the misty forest, but as the mist keeps growing thicker, they feel uneasy about the entire situation. Suddenly, Satsuki stops and tells them to get ready. She claims that there are more than a hundred people waiting with their magic aimed at them. Haruto claims that he would have sensed their presence, but Satsuki replies that the mist is intertwined by very strong magic, which is cloaking their presence entirely. Haruto draws his sword out, but before he can do anything, they all get separated. He finds himself surrounded by a bunch of people belonging to both the Brill and the Southern Cross Guilds. He gets very confused at this, but their leader, Litos, walks forward, informing him that the Southern Cross, the Brill family, and the Illuminati have joined forces together to take back Asahi from him. He gets angry at this and engages Litos in a duel. He runs towards him and, with a single slash, cuts Litos' shield into two, and he immediately realizes that he cannot win alone against Haruto. Haruto, however, keeps pushing on and tries to land another hit, but Lido dodges and kicks him back before telling the members around him to shoot at Haruto. Haruto runs towards Lido's again and blocks the oncoming arrows, when suddenly an arrow whizzes past him from behind and hits Lido's on the shoulder, completely nullifying his ability. Haruto turns around and spots Alicia with a bow and an arrow. She tells them that her special ability is nullifying magic, and if her arrows hit anyone, it will seal their sensibilities. Lido shouts at his comrades to attack them, but Alicia shoots an arrow up in the air, which divides into hundreds of arrows and rains upon the hordes of enemies, sealing their abilities and making them useless. Taka has taken Asahi to an isolated location and told her that he cannot let Haruto be with her because he can't protect her. Asahi again tells him to recreate their own guild, but Taka refuses. Asahi also refuses to go with Taka, so he imprisons her inside a ball and releases gas, which knocks her out. He releases her from the capsule and starts walking towards her, but suddenly some members of his guild run up to Asahi and grab her. Taka gets mad at them and tells them to leave her this instant, but it turns out that they are imposters and not from his guild. They quickly surround Taka and subdue him, but the rest take Asahi and run away. Haruto and Satsuki go back to the inn, where an announcement is made by both the leaders of the Brill Society and the Southern Cross, claiming that they have joined their guilds together, making them the strongest guild in the game, both in terms of power and numbers. They also ended up betraying the Illuminati at the end and capturing Asahi for themselves. Now they have renamed their combined guild the Divine Guild. Haruto simply gets up and checks up on his equipment before telling Satsuki that he is going to save Asahi. Satsuki has some brains, so she tells him to think again, as the Divine Guild now has a combined force of more than 3,000 individuals, and he can never fight against them. She tells him to collaborate with Taka, but he refuses and tells her to stay back, as most likely he will die. If he dies before saving Asahi, then she should join forces with Taka, as without Haruto in the picture, Taka won't mind helping Satsuki. He finally arrives at the battlefield and sees an entire army of people waiting for him as he stands there alone. He looks at the sky one last time, coming to terms with the fact that he is not going to come out of this alive, and runs towards their forces at full speed. Satsuki goes to Taka to talk to him, as this is the only possible way she could think of helping Haruto in any way possible. He agrees to talk to her, and when she asks him what he is doing to try and save Asahi, he replies that the combined strength of both the Brill family and the Southern Cross is too strong and they have double the number of men that the Illuminati has. He tells her that he is planning meticulously and looking for an opportunity to strike, as he cannot take any chances in saving Asahi. Satsuki gets mad at him and tells him that Asahi being kidnapped was his fault in the first place. She screams at him that Haruto was always able to keep her safe, but the one time Haruto wasn't there to protect her, Taka wasn't able to do anything and let Asahi get kidnapped by the people he put his faith in. Taka seems taken aback but is not ready to accept his mistake. He tells her that this time he will plan perfectly and save Asahi in one fell swoop. Satsuki looks at him and tells him that Haruto has gone alone to the battlefield to try and save Asahi, while Taka is sitting here twiddling his thumbs and scheming. Taka looks at her and tells her that it is good, as this way Haruto will also die, which will make Taka's life much easier. He tells Satsuki to let Haruto die inside the game, as it is beneficial for the both of them. He tells her that if Haruto dies, he will never be able to access Reunion and will never be able to meet Asahi again, 
and Asahi doesn't exist in real life, so his entire attention would be focused on Satsuki. And similarly, Taka will stay in this world with Asahi, and he won't have to deal with Haruto constantly grabbing Asahi's attention. Satsuki looks at him in disgust and tells him that Asahi is her friend and she will do anything to save her. She tells him that if he cannot help her save Asahi, then she will just go alone to help Haruto, as she has a spine and isn't a coward like Taka. Meanwhile, Haruto has been destroying the enemy lions one after the other. He is much stronger than any of the foes, but their overwhelming numbers have been posing a problem for him. The magic users on top of the fortress combine their strength and cast an incredibly strong explosion magic on top of Haruto, and he is unable to dodge it. The explosion creates a giant crater, and everyone thinks that Haruto has died. But to their surprise, as the dust clears, the shadow of a figure is seen, and it turns out that Haruto is still standing. He once again jumps forward and starts destroying the entire army alone. He ends up in a face-off against the enemies, who tell him to surrender because he is already half-defeated and very injured. He can't even dream of saving Asahi in this state, but Haruto tells them to shut up. Before he could proceed, however, he was tied up by a bunch of magical chains that held him high above the ground, completely incapacitating him. The enemies laugh at him, and their commander orders them to finish Haruto off while he is weak and incapacitated. They start walking towards him, and even Haruto admits defeat, but suddenly, a bunch of lightning arrows come towards the ground and break his chain. To his complete surprise, Taka lands in front of him, Satsuki follows him, and the three of them stand in the middle of the entire enemy army. Taka looks at Haruto and tells him to remember that he is here to save Asahi, not to save him. Haruto looks at him and nods in acknowledgement. Taka asks Haruto about the number of enemies still remaining, and he replies that around 1500 enemies are still around, as he was only able to destroy half of the army alone. Taka and Haruto start working together in synergy, and by using their special abilities, they are soon able to destroy the remaining half of the armies. They beat the crap out of anyone that came in their way and run towards the giant door to the fortress. They combine their forces again, and with a combined attack, blow the door to smithereens. They enter a giant hallway, which leads to a stadium where they see a bunch of enemies alongside both Lido's and Angelo's, the leaders of the Brill Society, and the Southern Cross. Taka notices an unconscious Asahi in the arms of Angelus, and his blood starts boiling as he watches his girl in another guy's hand. He rushes at him with a powerful punch, but everyone dodges out of the way. Taka is shocked, as his speed is so overwhelming that no one could possibly dodge it. Angelus quickly attacks Taka, but he immediately dodges and tries to land on the ground. But Angelus immediately creates spikes there, forcing him to jump again and again. Whenever he lands somewhere, he gets immediately attacked, even though he is teleporting around. Haruto is also very confused at this, but Satsuki tells him that Angelus is probably reading Asahi's brain. And as she can see the future, he is able to see the future once he forces his way into her brain. Suddenly, Taka gets bound by a red energy beam, which he is unable to break through, no matter how hard he tries. Angelus tells Litos to finish Taka off while he is bound. But as soon as he comes forward, Haruto attacks him. Litos, however, is able to dodge his attack and counter it, pushing him back. Haruto then uses an air slash, but Litos is able to block the attack, to his surprise. Satsuki tries to wake Asahi up by shouting her name, but Angelus tells her that it's of no use and creates magical ice spikes from the ground, which hit Satsuki, and she falls down. Satsuki, however, decides that she has been saved enough times, and this time she won't be the damsel in distress. She unlocks her full potential and starts floating in the sky with an overwhelmingly powerful aura surrounding her. She summons all the elemental kings around her, tells them to provide her with all of their energies, and creates an insanely strong magical circle that suckers every bit of magical aura from the stadium and eliminates it alongside all the members of their clan. The magic nullifies, and Taka is let loose, which scares Litos, and he asks Angelus about the new plan. Angelus looks at him and tells him not to worry, as they are going to use their emergency plan and it will work no matter what. Litos looks at him with relief, but suddenly, Angelus creates a ball of dark energy and stabs Litos in the stomach, pushing the energy ball inside of him. Litos starts going out of control and gets overwhelmed with dark magic, going completely berserk. He rushes forward and smashes his sword on the ground and the shockwave throws both Haruto and Taka away. Suddenly, Asahi also wakes up, which stops Angelus from being able to see the future, but she is so exhausted that she cannot do anything. Satsuki has also exhausted almost all of her powers and can only use one magical attack at a time. 
Asahi screams at them to fight like they fought before, to remember the sense they used six years ago, to think about the techniques they used, and to be synergetic. She asks them to attack in tandem, and no one can defeat them. Suddenly, the rings worn by all of them start glowing, and their senses wake up from their slumber. All three of them decide to bet everything on one final attack and go all out on that. Satsuki uses her magical abilities to bend space, and Taka uses his magical abilities to bend time, while Haruto uses his ethereal swordsmanship to break through time and space and deliver a million slashes to the Berserk Litos while he is unable to move, killing him in an instant. Satsuki runs up to Asahi, while Haruto stands in front of Angelus. Angelus tries to run away, but Taka is standing behind him, and he knocks him down with a straight, hard punch in the face, and Satsuki uses her flame magic to burn him to death. Asahi asks Taka to give her the red gem, as she wants to try and look through the visions again, as they are the only memory she has. Taka seems reluctant, but she promises him that she won't get unconscious, and finally Taka gives it to her. She holds it in her hands and focuses, which results in everyone getting flashes of her hazy memories, in which a bunch of people in white cloaks are discussing her abilities and how they can use her. Taka is extremely surprised by this and asks her what it is. Asahi replies that, even though she doesn't know anything about it, she feels that this is what happened to her in the past six years. She is determined to find out what these memories are and how she can get them back. She then tries one final time to ask Taka to join their guild, but he refuses once again telling her that he doesn't deserve her yet and that he needs to work more on himself before he can show her his face again. He then turns towards Haruto, tells him not to die before he has the chance to kill him, and leaves. Soon, Haruto, Asahi, and Satsuki go to find a rumored treasure in a dangerous sea zone. They take a ride on the ship of pirate Captain Alveda, not the one from One Piece, who is the only one brave enough to visit the harsh sea called Lost Pentagon. Haruto has heard rumors of an unbreakable sword on the bottom of the sea there, and Alveda tells him that the rumors are true. She warns them that taking out the sword is not easy, and everyone who has tried to claim it has failed. The ship soon reaches Lost Pentagon, an area permanently covered by dark clouds and fog. Alveda gives Haruto and his friends a boat and advises them not to stay too long under the water as it will quickly drain their HP. Given how the submarines are behaving, they decide to dive into the sea without any protective equipment. Using one of Satsuki's light spirits as a torch, they reach the bottom of the sea and explore the ruins there. Haruto finds that his HP is gradually decreasing because of staying underwater, and he signals his friends to return to the surface to breathe. Once outside, they whine like little bitches that the area is too large and it will take too long to completely explore it. But Asahi points them toward a place, claiming that something can be hidden there. Her friends follow her advice, and Haruto finds a sword stuck on the ocean floor at the location she suggested. It is no ordinary sword, but his former sword, Pleiades, which is one of the strongest weapons in this world. He can feel that it is definitely his sword and not a look-alike, and Asahi tells him to pull it out quickly. Haruto holds the sword, and it starts glowing, but then the ground below them starts rattling and a giant sea serpent monster comes out of the ground with the sword stuck in its head. Satsuki knows that the monster is called Igir, and it is the boss of this region. Asahi points out its red eyes and suggests that it is enraged, just like the previous two bosses they fought. Igir suddenly attacks them, and Haruto blocks its attack with his aura. He rushes to attack the monster, but it swats him away easily. Asahi fires at Igir, but her shot is not effective in piercing its thick armor. Her attack has distracted it, and it is about to swallow her when someone throws a dagger inside the sea serpent's mouth. The dagger grows in size and stops the monster's mouth from closing. Satsuki saves Asahi, and then they see that the person who just saved her was their old friend Clive. They can only stare at him with shock as Clive challenges eager after it frees itself. He throws his daggers at the monster's eyes to blind it, and then signals his friends to get back to the surface. However, once they reach Alveda's ship, Clive is no longer with them, and he only leaves a message to them, stating that he has something to do and that he will meet them soon. Haruto and others are surprised by his sudden appearance and disappearance, but they think that this is exactly how Clive is. The next day, Haruto and Satsuki visit Taka in the real world where he flexes his generational wealth on them and says that he will treat them to anything for attacking them earlier. Satsuki shocks him by ordering the entire dessert menu and not sharing it with anyone. But after she is finished, he gets to business. Taka wants to talk about Asahi, and he asks his friends if they have noticed anything strange ever since she came back. Satsuki points at how the rumors were spreading unnaturally fast, and Taka says that the largest guild of Union 
Gnosis was behind it. Gnosis was a secretive and shady guild that had a lot of influence even in the real world too. And Haruto and Satsuki find it hard to believe that they were trying to make everyone go after Asahi in the game. Taka wants to save her, but he also requests that they keep it a secret from her. After that, Satsuki tells him about Pleiades being stuck on Eager's head and how Clive ghosted them after rescuing them. Taka finds it hard to believe, and he suspects that the red stone that gives Asahi those terrible flashbacks is the key to solving the mysteries going around them. He claims to have a theory about Asahi's body being still alive in the real world and scientists trying to experiment on her. Haruto and Satsuki snap out on hearing this, and even Taka finds his hypothesis outrageous. Just then, his butler comes to inform him that they have found Nozomi's address, and Taka is flustered because he doesn't want his guests to know that he is looking for his former friends. He claims that he is only doing this to make Asahi happy and has no plan to reunite Subaru. Later, Haruto and Satsuki log into the game again, and along with Asahi, they try to claim Pleiades once more. Their second attempt is also a failure, and as they are moping about it, Clive comes to greet them. The reunion is quite awkward, as he tries to dodge their questions about the previous meeting and says that they will catch up about their real lives later. Clive claims that he was also after Eager and found them by coincidence. His friends believe him, but Alveda has some suspicions about him. Clive shows them a rare item that allows them to breathe and move freely inside water, and tosses it into the sea before they dive in. They find themselves covered in a protective layer, and then the sea serpent Eager appears before them. Going with their plan, Haruto attacks Eager first and stabs it with his full power to make it scream in pain. After that, Clive throws his daggers at the monster, and Asahi boosts their power with her bullets. Their combo attack creates a web of strings around the sea serpent, and Clive restrains it. Using Haruto's help, he pulls the monster out of the sea, and everyone else also comes to the surface. Their Satsuki freezes the monster and the water around it with a powerful ice magic. Haruto goes to release Pleiades from the frozen dragon's body, but just as he touches the sword, Clive stabs him from behind. Haruto turns back to see his evil smile, and he collapses. Satsuki and Asahi are in disbelief as they see him fall, and Asahi starts to hyperventilate, and her sense profit art activates involuntarily. Haruto wakes up in a hospital bed and wonders how he got here, and then Asahi comes into his room and hugs him. She cries as she tells him that he will be fine soon, but Haruto still has no idea about what is happening. Asahi explains that six years ago, he got a game over in Union when he tried to protect Nozomi, and in the real world, he fell into a coma after that incident. Haruto knows this is not true, as Asahi died trying to protect him from that attack. But right now, she is alive in front of him. Soon, his other friends will also come to greet him, and they look happy together. Haruto asks them about the game reunion, but they have never even heard the name. He can only wonder what is happening, and at night, when he is losing his mind, he sees Alicia's holograph appear in his room. Haruto asks her what is happening, and she tells him that right now, he is inside a world created by Asahi's ability profit art. She explains that the use of senses was not limited to just the virtual world, and they could be used in the outside world too. Asahi's profit art was not just the ability to see the future, it was the ability to choose between different possible futures, and she does not know it yet. A few moments ago, when Haruto was backstabbed by Clive, she subconsciously activated her ability and chose this world where she does not die and he ends up in a coma. This was the only way she could prevent him from playing Reunion and prevent his death. Haruto finds it hard to believe, and Alicia explains that the Union was not just a game but a lab and a training ground to help people train and awaken their senses so that they can be used in real life. However, all of this was secondary, and the game's Union and Reunion were developed solely because the people behind them wanted to awaken Asahi's profit art. Alicia states that the Guild Gnosis is the one who created Union to obtain her ability. They gave Asahi intense psychological stress to force her to awaken her abilities, and she created this world. Just as she finishes telling him this, Alicia's time runs out and she disappears. But before leaving, she tells Haruto that he is the point of singularity and only he can save Asahi. Haruto wonders what he can do, and he absentmindedly picks up his ring, not noticing the mirror glitching. The next day, Asahi visits him and reminds him of the promise they made just before the accident. She had asked Haruto to promise her that they would protect each other, and for that, they exchanged rings in the game and were planning to do it in real life too. She thinks it is a good time to exchange their rings in real life, but Haruto feels that is not right. He says that she already saved him twice, but he cannot accept this world. 
he tells Asahi that he needs to go to the real world to protect her, and the world starts glitching heavily. She laughs, not sure what he means, but she believes him anyway. They hold hands, and the rings act as catalysts in sending him through the dimension and back into the world he came from. Haruto arrives in reunion right before he gets stabbed by Clive, and he summons his sword to parry his attack. They both get into fighting positions, and Haruto is glad to see Satsuki and Asahi. Satsuki check confronts Clive and asks him why did he attack their friend, and he replies that he has changed in the past six years and is now Subaru's enemy. However, Haruto is sure that Clive will never betray his friends. He realizes that the person in front of them isn't Clive, but a shapeshifter mimicking him. Haruto attacks him, and while the man blocks his sword, he can't dodge the punch full of his aura that knocks the wind out of his lungs and undoes his shapeshifting. The man pretending to be Clive returns to his original form and uses the magic circle on his hand to control Igir. He rides the sea serpent, introduces himself as Simon, the sixth seed of the guild Gnosis, and declares that he will kill them here. He uses his ability, merges with the sea serpent to become a hideous monster, and shoots an energy blast at Haruto and his friends. Satsuki blocks it, but her shield breaks, and they are blown away. The fused monster then detaches its arms and fires them as projectiles, and Satsuki once again puts on a shield to protect her and her friends. Simon keeps on attacking her and breaks the shields, and in the smoke resulting from the attack, he catches Satsuki and tells Haruto not to move if he wants her to live. The monster asks Asahi to awaken her power to save her friend and tightens his grip around Satsuki, threatening to crush her to death. Asahi starts using her power to save her, but suddenly a flurry of daggers cuts the monster's limbs and frees Satsuki. Haruto catches her and finds that Albada has come to rescue them, but he has realized that she is not who she pretends to be. The pirate captain transforms and reveals that it was the real Clive all along, and Haruto is sure that it is his friend because of his trademark pose. Clive calls out the shapeshifter who was mimicking him just now and tells him that identity theft is not a joke. They get ready to fight again, but before anyone can attack him, Simon creates a giant magic circle that covers the sky. He summons thousands of lightning bolts down on his enemies, and Haruto protects Asahi, enduring the attack till it ends. The monster is impressed, but he tells them that Satsuki and Clive have perished because of his attack. However, he gets a shock as Clive suddenly attacks him, and then he and Satsuki come out of hiding. They say that they survived the attack by combining their abilities, and Simon is shocked. Clive uses his power to transform the knives he threw at the monster into hooks. Haruto understands the plan and he tosses Asahi high in the sky so that she can shoot the transformed knife. She strikes the hook and activates its ability to restrain any monster. The fused monster falls on the frozen sea, and Haruto takes this chance to get out his sword, but it is stuck there too tightly. He suddenly has an idea and asks his friends to cooperate with him. Satsuki and Clive send their power towards him and Asahi combines them and sends it towards the sword, fully charging it with their combined energy. The sword begins to glow and Haruto uses his ultimate combo attack to destroy the Simon and the Sea Serpent from within. After a bright flash of light, the enemy is reduced to nothing, and Haruto and the girls reunite with Clive on the ship. Before they can talk about the past, he shows them the red crystal that dropped after Igir was defeated. Asahi takes it, and another memory of the hooded scientists experimenting on her flows into her mind. In this memory, Alicia comes to rescue her and takes down the scientists. She uses her ability to seal Asaha's sense, and then a red crystal ball comes out of her and shatters into many pieces. The memory ends, and everyone realizes that the red stones with flashbacks are the part of the crystal ball that shattered in the vision. The group reaches Taka, who doesn't believe Clive is real, so he attacks him and overwhelms him to prove his skills. Seeing that he could easily defeat him, Taka agrees that Clive is not an imposter. Haruto and friends tell him everything that happened at sea, and they show him the sword Pleiades as proof. Taka finds it hard to believe and takes them to his guild base. There, Clive informs them that the woman who saved Asahi was called Alicia, and he was working together with her to keep Asahi safe from the shadows. Haruto claims that he has already met her, and this makes Satsuki and Asahi jealous, and they demand that he tell them everything he knows about her. Haruto tells them meeting her a few times before, and then comes to the story about being sent to another world created by Asahi to save his life and how he met Alicia there. He repeats what she told him about Asahi's true power. No one believes that Prophet Art has the power to choose a suitable future, and Taka starts quarreling with Haruto. Clive laughs at them because they used to fight like this in the past, and he reminds them that the most important thing right now is protecting Asahi. 
since the strongest guild, Gnosis, is after her, everyone in Subaru needs to awaken their power to protect her. Satsuki says that they cannot be complete yet as Nozomi is missing, and she wants to go see her. Taka gives her the address but tells her that he cannot come with them since Nozomi is always nervous and shy around him, and he suspects that she is scared of him. He has no idea that she likes him, and his cluelessness infuriates Satsuki and Asahi. In the real world, Haruto and Satsuki go to meet Nozomi at her home, and they run into her at the gate. She has changed a lot from the past and invites them to talk over a cafe. Nozomi informs them that she now works as a model. Once she transferred schools, she worked hard to change herself and became more popular once she gained some confidence. After they are done catching up, Haruto requests that she log into reunion since everyone else is already there. Nozomi replies that she cannot do him this favor since she has stopped playing games ever since Asahi died in that accident. Satsuki and Haruto tell her that Asahi is still alive in the world of reunion, and she refuses to believe them. They try to convince her to trust them and see Asahi herself after she logs in, but it is of no use. Later, everyone except Nozomi has logged in, and they are at their old base, where they can only talk about how much Nozomi has changed. Satsuki asks Taka to come meet her the next time, claiming that she will definitely listen to him if he asks her to log in. He still does not like the idea, but Asahi pleads with him to meet Nozomi, and he has no choice but to agree to meet her. Just then, an event notification appears before them, and Satsuki reads that it was something called Sweet Dance Party, an in-game prom for nerds who won't find a partner in the real world. The event description claims that it will be a romantic night where eternal love will bloom between partners, and Satsuki and Asahi know what they want. Satsuki is nervous and fidgety about the dance party even in the real world, so she logs in early and calls Haruto to meet her privately. She wants him to ask her out for the dance, and she blushes while telling him that. Haruto is taken aback, but Satsuki can no longer hold her feelings and confesses that she has liked him ever since elementary school. Seeing him too stunned to give her a response, she asks him to take his time. Haruto can't shake her words out of his mind and can only think about their friendship as he looks through their old photos. But then he gets a message from Taka asking him to come to Asahi's grave right now. Haruto goes to meet him, and there, Taka declares that he will ask Asahi to the dance party tomorrow, and he wanted to at least tell his rival about it. Haruto acts like it is no big deal and tells him to do whatever he wants. Taka hates this attitude of his and punches him. Haruto asks him what his problem is as he tries to fight back, but Taka effortlessly beats him. He claims to be better than Haruto in everything, both in the real world and inside the game. He says that he always thinks about Asahi and wants to protect her smile, but she still chose Haruto over him. Taka is furious that she sacrificed his life for him and wishes that he had died that day. Haruto is furious as he hears this and yells that Taka is not even thinking about what Asahi wants. He attacks him, but Taka slams him on the ground as he declares that he has always loved Asahi and wants to keep her happy now. Haruto gets up and tells him that Asahi thinks of him just as a friend, and she wants all her friends from Subaru back and united once more. Taka hits him, but Haruto blocks his attack, announces that he also loves Asahi, and then punches him back. Taka is left speechless after his declaration of love, and he says that he will give up on Asahi now. He was always pissed that Haruto never asserted his true feelings before, but now that he has gotten him to reveal the truth, he is satisfied. Haruto leaves after hearing that, and Taka takes out the Subaru rings from his locket and buries one of them over Asahi's grave, saying that he will surely get over her. Inside the game, the dance night has finally arrived, and Satsuki is eagerly waiting for Haruto. However, he apologizes to her and says that he cannot go with her. She replies that she understands and tells him to go to Asahi. As he leaves, she starts crying, but then Taka comes from behind her, and he states that he also asked Asahi for a dance but she flatly rejected him. Satsuki says that he does not look as upset as she expected, but he says that he has matured after his fight with Haruto. He offers to become Satsuki's dance partner for the night since they have both lost the battle of love, and she takes up his offer. Meanwhile, Haruto enters the dance hall and makes his way through the crowd to find Haruto. He asks her for a dance, and she is happy to accept it. They dance and get lost in each other's eyes. In the outside world, unaware of the development in the two love triangles within her friend circle, Nozomi recalls the moment when she fell in love with Taka. She was just a weak and timid girl in primary school, and one day, Taka was kind enough to help her with her cleaning duties after everyone ditched her. She decides to meet him in the game and logs in. Nozomi reaches the dance hall hoping to find her friends there, but as soon as she enters the hall and finds Taka dancing happily with Satsuki, 
Her heart breaks. She starts crying as she runs away and reaches an empty place outside. Suddenly, the place around her glitches, and she finds herself in a strange, dark hall. Nozomi wonders where she is when a veiled woman and a clown come to greet her. They introduce themselves as the members of Gnosis and laugh at her being cut by her friend, while she is terrified of the clown. After a few days, Haruto and Satsuki meet up in the real world. He is awkward to face her, but she is more composed since she has already cried her heart out in the past few days. They meet up with Taka outside Nozomi's house, and there, she tells the boys that last night, she got a call from Nozomi's mother about her suddenly missing from the house. They ask her mother the details, and she knows nothing other than the fact that Nozomi left her VR headset on her desk before leaving the house. Kakanori hacks it and finds that Nozomi had logged in just once two days ago and Satsuki realizes that it was the same time as the dance party. The members of Subaru get on a video call after Taka and Clive have finished their investigation into their missing friend. Clive has found out that after Nozomi logged in, she went to the dance hall, and after she left it, she went straight to the sky. He adds that she is still inside Reunion, and he has found out that she is in the Dragon's Fortress right now, but her real-life location cannot be traced. Haruto logs in and visits his base, where he finds Asahi trying to redecorate their base. They look into each other's eyes and start getting chummy, but Clive and Satsuki interrupt them because they have to find Nozomi. They teleport to the Dragon's Fortress, where Taka is waiting for them, and they find that the fortress seems as if it was made by Nozomi's dream world sense. They enter the fortress and find it hard to believe that Nozomi could make it right after she logged into the game. As they explore the building, Haruto senses a trap, and then huge stuffed toy monsters emerge from the ground and surround them. The group is certain that these are Nozomi's familiars, and this place was created by her. Asahi wants to talk to Nozomi through her familiars, but they are not friendly and attack her. Luckily, Haruto saves her from getting hurt and takes out two of the familiars, along with Clive. Satsuki tries to burn the other two, but they resist her fire magic and walk towards her. She is about to use another attack when she sees Nozomi and staggers. The familiars attack her, but Taka and Haruto protect her from them. Nozomi's cruel laughter echoes in the hall as she says that Taka really cares the most about Satsuki. She greets her old friends once again, and Haruto is shocked by how strangely she was acting. Nozomi laughs and claps as she sees Asahi alive inside the game but then tells her friends that they made a mistake in coming after her. Suddenly, the two players from Gnosis appear in the room, and they introduce themselves as the fifth and fourth strongest players in their guild. Nozomi laughs as she declares that she joined Gnosis too and created this fortress by combining her powers with the clown. Haruto is furious and declares that he will take his friend back even if he needs to use force, and the clown uses his power to summon his familiars all around him. The heroes fight against the familiars and destroy them one by one. Satsuki attacks the Veiled Woman, but she uses a combination move with the clown to create a magic cloth that absorbs all her attacks. Haruto tries attacking her too, but his attacks are also absorbed into the magic cloth. It is Nozomi's turn, and she summons her familiars to attack her friends. They try to snap her out of it, but she lashes out at them, saying that they let her down. Satsuki tells her to wake up, stating that they are all here to save her, but she insults her and calls her a Nozomi plucks out a strand of her hair and teleports it through the magic cloth so that it reaches Asahi without being detected, and there the hair transforms into a tiny two-headed snake and bites her. Asahi screams in pain as she sees a terrible memory where Haruto refused to put his faith in her future predicting ability, and almost messed up in a fight against a monster. He refused to admit that he was wrong and started arguing with her. The memory is even more intense in the form of the dream and Asahi collapses, saying that she hates Haruto. The two members of Gnosis vanish alongside Nozomi, telling Haruto and his friends that they will meet again. The fortress starts to fall apart as soon as they leave, and Satsuki flies her friend out of the danger. They go back to their base, where Asahi recovers from the bad dream. Haruto is with her, and he wants to stay the night to take care of her. Asahi tells him that she is fine and suggests that he focus on finding and bringing Nozomi back to her senses. Soon, Satsuki and Clive also return to the base and inform them that Taka has mobilized his guild Illuminati to look for Nozomi. Clive tells Satsuki and Haruto to log out and get some rest because it was night in Japan, while he stays behind to take care of Asahi because of the time difference. He keeps Asahi company. But as he leaves her alone for a little while, the bite holes from Nozomi's snake start spreading their poison much deeper into her body and mind. In the real world, Taka invites Haruto and Satsuki over again, and he tells them about the detectives he has hired to look for Nozomi in the real world. 
The things she said to him made him realize that it was his fault, but he still does not know what exactly he did wrong. Satsuki realizes that Taka will stay a hopeless idiot if she doesn't reveal everything to him and starts explaining what forced Nozomi to change. She tells him that Nozomi loves him, and when she saw him dancing with another girl, she was so shocked that her whole personality changed. Taka finally realizes what was wrong and how Gnosis took advantage of Nozomi's jealousy. He swears to find her and make things right, but then suddenly, the trio feels a sharp pain in their heads along with dizziness. They look around and find that their cake and drinks are finished, and time has changed without them realizing it. They panic as they wonder what is happening, but then a strange man appears behind them and tells them that time is his ally right now, and they thank Haruto and his friends for helping Asahi develop her abilities. Everyone realizes that he is a member of Gnosis and tries to attack him, but the man manipulates time once again and vanishes without a trace. Taka and Satsuki find that time has returned to normal, and Haruto remembers what Alicia told him about people being able to use their senses in the real world. He is worried about Asahi and runs home to log into the game. In the game, Asahi is sleeping, and she has a dream about the past incident where Haruto ignored her plan. Even after messing up the first time, he refused to follow her plan and defeated the enemy boss in a different way. She was furious at him for not trusting her and told him that she did not want to see his face ever again, and he pointed his sword at her. Her body trembles as she dreams about it, and when Haruto comes to see her, she flinches at his sight. Her other friends also gather around soon, and they tell her and Clive that a member of Gnosis used his senses in real life. Clive does not doubt them even a bit, and he thinks that the man who manipulated time was the leader of Gnosis Alicia had once warned him about. Suddenly, their hideout starts to rumble and Asahi tells everyone to run away, but it is too late, and the roof falls down upon them. They somehow manage to teleport outside in time, and there they find a glowing tower in front of their hideout. Haruto thinks it looks like the white water spirit fountain that they cleared six years ago, and they are sure that Nozomi is the only one who can recreate such a thing. They infiltrate the crystal tower and make their way up while searching for traps and monsters. As they enter a replica of the boss room, Asahi gets a flashback of the bitter memories of her fight with Haruto, because that incident happened in White Water Spirit Fountain. The poison from the snake bite starts spreading even more, and she rudely ignores Haruto when he asks her if she is fine. They walk ahead, and Asahi uses her senses to warn Taka of an incoming monster attack, but nothing comes their way. Haruto realizes that something is troubling Asahi, so he suggests that they should move back now. But she strongly rejects his sympathy and rushes to save Nozomi. The rest of the crew has no choice but to follow her to the boss room on the top floor. Nozomi comes out to greet them, and Asahi asks her to cease her madness and return to them. She replies that she has no attachment to their team now and once again curses Taka and Satsuki. Taka tells her that Gnosis is manipulating her negative emotions to control her, but she does not care about it. She takes out her weapon and summons the army of her familiars, and then changes herself into a mixtape of monsters. Taka tells her that he will definitely save her from this, but then the two members of Gnosis appear beside her, and they tell him to try and free her from their grip. Nozomi commands her family to attack Subaru members, and everyone gets into formation to fight while guarding Asahi. They attack the unending army of familiars, and Asahi can't seem to use her profit art ability when it is needed the most. Suddenly, she hears Nozomi's voice in her head, claiming that no one would believe her even if she could use profit art. Asahi starts losing her mind, and everyone is worried about her. This gives the clown a chance to attack them with his thousand cannons, and the group is separated. Nozomi faces Taka and Satsuki, who coincidentally ended up on one side again. She curses and attacks them, but Taka blocks her attack and tells Satsuki not to fight back. He declares to save Nozomi without harming her, and he pins her to a statue on the floor. Taka destroys the statue to open a hole and falls through it along with Nozomi. They reach a lower floor and he tells her that he wants to talk to her, but she refuses to listen to anything and punches him. Taka does not dodge and keeps walking towards her even as she attacks him yet again. Now Nozomi is flustered as she asks him why he was not dodging, and he says that he does not deserve to dodge since he hurt her. He explains that he always loved Asahi, but she never had any feelings for him, and he turned bitter and cruel because of that. That is why he can understand her emotions. He knows how Nozomi felt bad after watching him dance with Satsuki even if they were just comforting each other after being rejected by their crushes, and he wants to take responsibility for it. Taka clears the misunderstanding, saying that there is nothing between him and Satsuki, but Nozomi still attacks him, claiming that it was too late for that now. 
She feels terrible about all the things she did because of the misunderstanding, but Taka does not stop moving towards her, even as she attacks him. His divinity sense aura destroys the familiars she throws at him, and as he touches her, Nozomi's mind control breaks. Taka tells her that he is angry at himself for not noticing her feelings and apologizes to her once more. Nozomi starts crying, and he hugs her, declaring his intent to bear all the punishment for the mistakes she made. He activates his ability, destroying her transformation and removing the evil sense possessing her body. Nozomi returns to normal, and she is overcome by grief and regret about what she did to her friends. But Taka hugs her and tells her that they should return to their friends. He promises to always stay with her from now on, and Nozomi relaxes for a while before recalling the horrible thing she did to Asahi. On the top floor, the two players from Gnosis wonder what Nozomi is doing below, but they don't worry much since she has already played her part by corrupting Asahi. They attack the remaining members of Subaru by surrounding Haruto, Asahi, and Clive with the magic cloth. Satsuki tries to break them free, but her attack is absorbed by the magic cloth. The clown tells her to stop wasting her power and attacks her, but she blocks it. The two players from Gnosis start taunting them, saying that Asahi's power will awaken when her friends die in front of her one by one, and then they will use that power to lead the world to a better future. Haruto is furious, and he signals Clive to launch their combo attack. Haruto throws his energy balls in the sky, and Clive hits them with his daggers, transforming them into his clones. The clown tries to shoot them all down, but Satsuki attacks him from another direction and pushes him back. The two Gnosis members fight off all the clones, but then Clive ties the girl with red strings and appears out of her shadow. Haruto attacks the clown, but then Asahi commands him to stop, and he hesitates and fails to deliver a fatal wound. Haruto and friends look at Asahi, who is emanating a dark aura and commanding her friends to fight an imaginary monster. She has lost her mind completely, and when Haruto tries to wake her up, she hallucinates that he is trying to attack her. She shouts that she hates him and shoots him point blank. Just as Haruto collapses, the dark aura surrounding Asahi vanishes, and she returns to her senses. She starts crying as she hugs him, saying this is not the type of future she wants. Satsuki goes to comfort her, but Asahi starts shining brightly and repels her. Clive wants to help them, but he is trapped in the magic cloth barrier. The Gnosis members claim that Asahi will wake up now since she has received the greatest shock possible, and they trap her in a magic prison. Satsuki tries to prevent Haruto's death by slowing down time with her full power, while Clive struggles inside the magic cloth barrier dodging the bullets of the clown. The cloth binds and restrains him, and the clown jumps towards him, aiming to end his life. Suddenly, Alicia appears out of nowhere, and she frees Clive and destroys the clown's guns. The two Gnosis members know who she is, and they plan to defeat her along with Subaru. However, before anyone can start fighting, the magic prison Asahi is trapped and breaks, and she screams as her body emits a blinding light. Meanwhile, Haruto wakes up in a pitch-dark place with no one around him. He walks forward and spots Asahi crying and begging him not to come near her. He still goes to her and caresses her as he tells her not to cry. Asahi remembers that day when Haruto pointed his sword at her. He only meant to destroy the monster hiding behind her. He told her that he would become strong and protect her so that she wouldn't have to cry anymore, and she smiled. In the world of reunion, Haruto stands up with his injured body, and thanks to his bond with Asahi, he awakens his ability and returns her to normal. The clown and the woman think that they have no chance of winning against Haruto since he has awakened now, but they do not dare to go back empty-handed to their boss. Just then, Taka and Nazumi also arrive at their location, and the whole team is reunited. Haruto wants to punish the Gnosis players for hurting Asahi, but they combine their abilities, turn the magic cloth into a dome surrounding them, and open portals with guns facing inside. They tell Asahi that her friends will all die inside the dome, but she believes that Haruto will break free of this trap. Inside the dome, Haruto uses his newly awakened power and uses an attack named Leonide's Origin, summoning white spirit lions that tear apart the magic dome and defeats the Gnosis players in just one hit. Once everyone gets outside, Satsuki scolds Haruto because she wanted to interrogate his enemies after defeating them, but his attack killed them instantly. After that, Nozomi apologizes for putting them in harm's way, but her friends have already forgiven her, and they have an emotional reunion. After that, they thank Alicia for saving them, and she claims that they won the battle with their own strength. Asahi thanks her for saving her from the experiments, but Alicia refuses to tell them her real identity. She takes out the sheath of Haruto's sword Pleiades and gives it to him, and as he sheaths it, she vanishes. Everyone returns to the real world. 
Taka funds Nozomi passed out in a cyber cafe, and he once again apologizes to her. He promises to stay with her forever and take responsibility of what she did when she was consumed by her negative emotions. Satsuki and Clive also take rest at their places, and Haruto wakes up in his room. He smiles as he thinks that Asahi really brought Subaru back to life. In a distant location, Alicia also logs out, and she knows her mission to stop Gnosis has not ended yet. The next day, they log into the game again and meet Asahi there. The legendary team called Subaru has finally reunited, and they swear to protect each other and become legends in this world. Watch this video on the screen next. See you soon.